Um, all right, I'll let Alaska Air come up here and talk about the case. Anybody going anywhere for a spring break?
do this. Um, email it to me. Russell, about the same. Yeah, just email it to me and I'll put it on. Basic information about Alaska Air. Um, Alaska Air Group is an airline or a group of airlines based out of the United States, uh, based out of with headquarters in Seattle, Washington. Um, right now, they own uh, two airlines: Alaska Air, which is their main character carrier, excuse me, and then Horizon Air, which is a regional carrier um, that they also use. Um, and Alaska Air also fully owns the ground handling company of the Heat Air Services, which is named after their founder, uh, Lance McGee. In 2016, Alaska Air uh, acquired Virgin America, um, and they allowed it to operate under the same name, Virgin America, until uh, April of 2018, uh, where they met, merged um, it together into the basic Alaska Airlines uh, airline that we know today. Um, so, again, some more basic information. Uh, the company was formed in 1985 by Lance McGee, um, and their current CEO has been in control uh, since early 2021. Company saw revenue uh, this past year over nine million dollars and reported a net income of four hundred seventy-eight million for twenty twenty-one. Um, so, Alaska Air Group is part of the transportation industry, um, which of course includes like taxi services and you know, airlines, uh, basically everything that's going to take you from point A to point B. Uh, and they organize and execute flights to many of the larger airports in the United States, um, and they have also uh, started to serve international flights to certain destinations like Canada, Mexico, and other South American countries where they believe and reserves to the places that they, uh, they take flights to. Um, so that top picture shows you the uh, some of the airlines that they fly to. I know it's kind of hard to see, but those the blue dots are the main ones that they fly out of, um, or where their headquarters per se are, since of course it's Alaska Airlines, or Alaska Air. And the gray dots are all of the different airports that they fly to. Um, so you can see there's a lot of airports in major cities. Um, you got Washington, you got some in California, a couple different ones in Mexico, Florida, that gray dot near Illinois, that's Chicago, uh, O'Hare, um, you got one in Virginia, Georgia. So they fly to a lot of the, the big airports, the big cities uh, throughout the US. Um, and of course, their largest competitors um, in the, their section of the industry, not the transportation industry as a whole, but as like an airline, their main competitors, are uh, JetBlue, American Airlines, Southwest, Delta, which some of the ones are going to be here. Um, and of course, there are other public airlines directing, um, excuse me, operating out of the United States that offer both domestic and international flights. Um, so, of course, you could say like, oh, it's Alaska Air, like they might not like be competitors exactly because they fly out in different areas, but because of the fact that they still fly out of most of the like continental mainland United States, um, these are still on my next slide, you can basically see this is just another look at their competition, um, showing that uh, all the different airlines they're basically competing with. So you can see American, Southwest, Delta, United. Um, those are like the main, uh, the main airlines that everyone really uses uh, when they fly. Um, so that's why it might be a little bit 
farther off in terms of their revenue passenger miles. Um, but Alaska Air is still right behind them, and they're competing well uh, with the other smaller airlines that people like you from time to time. So they're still in competition, of course, in the, in the total of the transportation in the airline industry, even though they might not be as close as or as large as some of those big airlines. Um, so this is my part of my pestle analysis. Um, so for the first uh, leg, uh, the political factors, so politics holds a large impact on airline group um, since the company not only flies inside the U.S. domestically but also to other countries. Um, so factors like military tension between countries, um, any kind of government corruption inside the U.S., um, the craziness of bureaucracy and any kind of government interference, um, contract enforcement uh, from other countries, uh, taxation, tariffs, wage legislation, basically anything, everything that the government controls and regulates um, over the entire country or any kind of agreements they have with the other countries that Alaska Air might be flying to and from, um, it can all have a, a large impact on whether or not they'll really be able to get off the ground and continue to fly um, for an extended period of time. Economic, uh, the overall state of the economy, of course, will impact all companies and, and all markets in general, but specifically, of course, Alaska Air, it holds a large impact um, based on the health, for their health and their growth as a company, um, as well as the state of the market of or the industry of transportation and the competition with it. So, like the infrastructure of the transportation injury, industry, excuse me, uh, the rate of inflation, interest rates, uh, exchange rates for foreign countries, of course, because currency isn't the same from country to country. Um, they're all different, or not money is different. Money is, of course, universal, but the, the rate and the, the worth of money, the value of country to country is different. Um, the skill of the workforce in each of these uh, countries that they're flying to type of economy and income levels in the area, um, some other factors can really make it possible, especially with the transportation industry. In the recent years, um, like with the threat of COVID and other pandemics and stuff like that, of course, those directly affect the transportation industry because people might not be flying as much um, when something like that's happening. Um, for social, uh, the culture of society uh, impacts the environment of each organization um, and plays a large role in marketing and advertising. So demographics of the population, the cultural taboos, education levels, um, power in each given community, the hierarchy of, of society, um, and the leader of interest and abilities of certain communities, um, all those affect directly with the airline itself. It's, it's a little more fragile because of course, um, plane tickets are expensive, like traveling is expensive because it's not just like getting a plane ticket to go somewhere, it's buying a hotel if you're gonna stay there, getting transportation to and from uh, wherever you're gonna stay, to drive around because of course if you get a hotel you're not just going to kind of sit there for the entire time like sightseeing all that stuff um, those hold a large impact and basically uh, that relates to a lot of the other factors or the other uh, legs of the analysis but it's also really important to the um, excuse me, to the social factors because of course some people uh, certain demographics certain communities might find those exact like parts of transportation to be more important than others like some may value nature more so they like sightseeing some may value just staying around family, so of course they might not need to transport as much. Um, so it really just depends on social factors. They hold a, a large impact, or uh, maybe not as large an impact as economic or something like that, but it's still an important part of the analysis. Um, and then the last three legs, so technological factors, um, stuff like developments of competitors, so a lot of airlines have apps, and they uh, streamline their transaction processes, um, all of the impacts of technology on cost, especially with an airplane, um, just the advancement of technology large impact on industry as a whole, um, and of course the airline industry in Alaska Air is, no, is not foreign to that, uh, it of course affects them too. Um, the world's always evolving, technology is always transforming, everyone's always trying to take those, those next steps um, in order to make themselves better and kind of better company grow. Um, the environment of course has a large impact on transportation, um, not just weather, but also on uh, pollution and emissions, different climates, the location of travel, of course, those are important things that a pilot has to think about, the company as a whole has to think about that um, in different areas. So, of course, climate change across the world, uh, air pollution regulation, renewable energy, um, all of that stuff, because uh, it just, like, how you operate, it'll change, and then how maybe you fuel your, your plane will be different, because the emissions you can have um, from a certain type of gas, or whether you're going to a certain country that may not, may not have the kind of fuel that you need, Lastly, 
between the legal and the regulations and laws, um, both one of the biggest impacts on any industry as a set of rules for what a company may be. So patents, copyright laws, data protection, health regulation, uh, protecting your customers, um, anything related to the other external factors, um, any laws that kind of overarch over the environmental and technological forward and things like that, um, and the employment laws for those that work with additional employment on those resources. Big impacts on these. So for my takeaways from this first part of my research, um, despite operating outside the mainland of the United States, Alaska Air is still able to generate uh, some stable revenue income. Of course, like I said, it may not be as high as some of those other, those other companies um, as the, the big four per se, um, you could say, of airlines, but they're still able to hold themselves um, or generate enough revenue to still be profitable. Um, like I said, same thing, though they might not be able to compete with the bigger airlines, they market themselves as a premier airline from Alaska um, to go along with their ability to fly to international destinations. So, of course, like with marketing, every airline might be able to fly to Anchorage or 11 bigger cities in Alaska, um, but Alaska Air, of course, they've got different locations spread throughout Alaska, so in their <coughs> Alaska Air, so they can market um, to that specific group, um, as well as marketing to, to all the other areas around the U.S. that they fly to. Uh, the group has continued to evolve and stay relevant by upgrading their processes, um, evolving technology, and purchasing other airlines to encourage growth. So like I said, now they bought Horizon Air, they bought Virgin America, so they're still expanding, um, not just basically staying in one location, like they can just say, oh, we're just Alaska, we're just going to stay in Alaska, we're going to buy it now. They're, no, they're working, so they're basically, uh, they're growing as a company, buying other companies. Lastly, um, after seeing nearly a 60% drop in sales in 2020, of course, with COVID-19, like I said, the transportation industry really took a hit. Um, they've since increased uh, back to sale revenue. I think I read that they had, they took about, uh, I think it was over $10 million, might be more, um, in lost revenue, basically, from, from of course, COVID-19 uh, COVID during that 2020 period. Um, but they, of course, got their revenue back up stable as well as their net income. So they're, 
towards buying out their fleets so you can get all of their, their air force, or not air force, they'll get all of their, their planes um, so that they have more, uh, more planes available to, to cater to their customers. Um, and then also, of course, you get maybe the, the expanded reach of, like reaching more parts of the country, of, of flying out maybe a better airport. Because of course, if someone wants to travel to South America, like Belize or something like that, like I said, they're not going to want to fly out of Anchorage, Alaska. Oh, you said yeah, the I Yeah, they're they're moderate they're moderate in this category because they're not one of the biggest ones. But like for Southwest, 
they offer only uh, like two free bags as well. So it's hard to compete with like some of the bigger ones when they don't really have anything else than vacation specials and group deals. So uh, yeah, the competitors, uh, like Martin said, that there are Southwest, Delta, American, and JetBlue. Uh, they aren't as big as most of the other ones, but uh, like we just talked about, that they look or they have not stopped flights mostly on the West Coast. Uh, I would say that they're moderate to low on this section because they're obviously not as big as all the other ones but they do offer cheap deals for West Coast flights and maybe other flights as well. But I mean, you obviously have to add a stop if you want to probably go from like the West Coast to the East Coast. Uh, and with that, that could potentially turn into whole day travels and people might just end up spending maybe like 50 to 100 bucks more if they can just add it nonstop and try going somewhere else. So that would be kind of hard for people if they want to go with Alaska Air. Uh, product substitution, like I talked about, that they want to become a 737 fleet, uh, and this can help out with whatever can happen. It becomes very, they become very flexible, so that, like if, like if anything happens to the plane, they may be able to just swap one out with one that's already at one of their hubs, and then they have to call, they don't have to like worry about getting another pilot for a different plane or something like that and then they essentially just end up, or if like a pilot calls off and they have one on standby, then the pilot already knows what, what plane he's gonna be flying, so that, that helps out with that, and it just makes things a lot more smoother, and it makes the customers more happy. I mean, obviously, if a, something happens to the plane, you're not gonna be happy because you're gonna get delayed, but you'll still end up having to get to your destination without maybe more time adding on if you had to switch on a plane, use a different plane, call a different pilot, whereas pilots are already trained just for 737s, it just makes things a lot easier, so. And then poten potential entrants, uh, I would say that they are pretty good because they, like Martin talked about, they bought out Virgin America, which that helps the company to grow, like you get their planes and, and that just helps out because it doesn't allow, it allows like, they're more on the smaller side, so with that, it helps out because they they kind of stay on the top of the smaller airlines side, which they uh, eliminate any p potential ones that are on the come up. So that just helps out as well. And I would say they are moderate to strong on this because they, they buy out any potential threats and they try to compete with the top airlines in the company. And then a business strategy that I would uh, give to Alaska Air is try to offer their customers, maybe like with Southwest, if they have two free bags, maybe try to offer them one or something like that. Because then that also helps out with cost. Because if they're trying to go a flight from the West Coast to the East Coast, this uh, potentially with one free bag could become cheaper because of that out of stop. But then, whereas opposed to a Delta flight or a American flight, they don't offer free bags. So with that, it might become a cheaper option and then it might end up taking the day trip with just making it a cheaper option, especially with a group deal or if you're going on a vacation. So that would be my one business strategy that I would suggest to them. And that would be all. One more question, anyone else? No question? <coughs> All right, so we talked about like um, resource-based models, right? Mm -hmm. For industrial organizational models. I mean, like, is it the industry that they're in that makes Alaska Airlines attractive, or is it like what they do as an organization with their fleet of planes or acquiring version or their destination that they choose? Like, what, what do you think would be? I would say it might be a little bit of both. I know that I was like, I was kind of comparing some prices when I was looking at them, and they do offer really cheap flights, but the problem with that though is that it obviously adds stops, and then you could possibly have layovers and stuff like that that could be potentially very long. But um, I don't know, also their technology, I would say, is pretty good as well with the planes. Um, 
I just think it just kind of just depends on the person though that if you want to spend an entire day traveling or just get there as quickly as possible and then it also comes down to the, the amount of money that you also want to spend too. So if you're looking for vacation deals though, I would say Alaska Air might be a good one because they offer, they offer good deals for vacationing like for like cruises and stuff like that or like group deals as well. So. Um, while they're like in the transportation industry, they also have like, of course, like they're updating their technology. So like they have their own app, um, which a lot of them are doing um, with like their ability to book on that app, track your rewards, uh, entertainment, like it offers so that you can get on the plane, like and United has like their own Wi-Fi. I mean, you can get on the plane, you can log on to the United app. It's got like a bunch of movies and stuff like that in the database. Um, so it's kind of like they're, they're trying to catch up in that sense where they're trying to Credit union, so basically like the same thing. They're trying to expand um, so that they are more than just than just like just transportation. Like they're trying to become uh, their own separate like brand and brand themselves so that they're uh, reaching into multiple places and multiple cities and multiple after. And also the with the credit unions and all that, you add credit card potentials and then they add miles to flying and then you get free flights as well. So that's another thing that they're also trying to pick up on. And, Obviously, when a one one does it, everybody else follows. It just whoever does it first, though, it might benefit you more. All right, excellent presentation, guys. Awesome. <laughs> Here's a question: Is the airline industry an attractive industry to enter? What are your thoughts? of travel like everybody maybe a, a dream is like oh travel the world like I want to be able to take people places but like a, like we kind of showed it can be really daunting because of the fact that the like top competitors are kind of made of giant stake in the in the industry as a whole so it's kind of hard to, to try to jump into it and hope to make up that headway um, but of course it can still be like enticing like hey I want to show people the world I want to travel and then also like with that maybe like you're a pilot or something like that. Like they also get to travel, like and fly to those places that they're going to. Of course, it's not like they, they're taking a vacation there and they get to like go fly to Jamaica and then stay in Jamaica for like two months. Like it's not that's not how that works. But like it's still like enticing because you get to see other places. Maybe not as hands on as you want, but you still get to you get to go. Yeah. Any other thoughts to like start an airline? I think it would be hard in sense is because you got to build hubs you have to get the planes I mean that's a lot of money and it takes time and I mean with that while you're just getting started I think like Southwest Delta JetBlue and uh, American are all like they're already there and all they have to do is just maybe upgrade things as opposed to building or like they might be build more hubs or something like that, but they they don't have to worry about building hubs at specific airports or something like that because they already have one there, and then they can just upgrade technology or upgrade planes, and it would just be a lot easier for them. And then it'll potentially get bought out maybe or something by another yeah. airline. But I mean, I, if you stay true to it and you and you believe that you could possibly be one of the better ones, I mean, it's just going to take a lot of time. You're not going to get into it and snap of a finger, but. The possibility yeah, yeah. Of, of potentially getting there. Anybody else? Um, I'd say overall, I mean, try not to repeat what someone said. I think it's, I think on maybe if you're persistent and smart enough, because again, it's an industry that's always in demand, especially in today's day and age of technology and trans transportation. But it's an industry that's dominated by the large companies already. And there's some things that are going to get, um, like, for 
was that I failed to gate this event because even larger airports would have so many gates, but um, they can't have enough for every single airline out there. So I guess trying to fight for resources that I think it's extremely hard business. There's so many fixed costs. The planes are going to be usually the same. 767, 737, and everybody's gonna have some part of them, right? The fuel cost is going to be essentially the same, right? But just depending on where you're traveling to. Hence why a lot of these always, we always gotta bail them out. When the economy is hit really bad, we're like, oh, we gotta bail out America, United, right? They're going to lay off a ton of people because they're just the top dogs. So what do they have to offer? Credit card, credit, right? A package, a travel package, uh, increase to entertainment. Because all of that is variability costs, but they already have so many fixed costs. We don't know how many people are actually going to get on that plane to go to Jackson Hole, Wyoming, or wherever the case may be. So on that flight, you may take a hit. Right? Maybe your other networks, you may make a small profit margin. Well, your other flights, you can't control a flight that's supposed to leave, how many people are going to come to play. So it's extremely, extremely hard. That's why American United, JetBlue, um, those kind of stay, stay the top dog, but they never really move. And then you'll get, you know, uh, Spirit Airlines and stuff like that. And eventually what happened, those will get bought out too. You're like, well, why are they buying them out? I don't know, they're gonna try a new strategy, right? Different locations, blah, blah, blah. But we just saw that they made, Alaska Airlines, what, made $9 billion in revenue, but net income, which is profit, was $475. People gave you $9 billion, but you only hit 400 some million as profit, right? But it goes to show you, this is one of the industries where you don't make a lot of profit. Don't make a large, huge profit. Something just to keep in mind, like how it all plays out, because we talked about sort of core concepts. All right, um, we'll get into chapter three. No class on Friday. I have a very, very important conference. So Friday, no class. Let's kind of focus on next week. But um, we'll go over chapter three. Wednesday, and then I'm going to take attendance at the end of class. University, you know, just kind of coming down on the attendance, make sure it Any questions? All right, chapter three, core competency. Um, what is the best core competency that a company can have? What's the best resource that a company can have? Best resource. Don't think too hard. Capital. Capital. What kind? Well, you have the money, right? If you don't have what, the money is not executed in other ways. People. Yes. Who said people? Right. Human capital is the most greatest resource you can have. If you have intelligent people who can get the job done, you're going to always increase your business. Right? You're going to have intelligent people with new ideas who not only just come to work and do something, they assess what they do and think of how they can do it better. Right? If you have competent managers, competent owners, that is how a company grows. Right? It's not just about the money. There's a ton of people who, I mean, Donald Trump was given from the bank six, seven billion dollars, right? He may be a total failure of company, you know, two, three hundred failed companies. It doesn't mean company that never made a profit. They just operate off debt. You never, ever, ever make a profit. You can't really say that's a successful company, right? Although other companies he has has been successful, not Donald Trump, actually. Um, <clears throat> So core competencies, resources, capabilities, and competitive advantage, right? I'm going to talk about that big word, value. So 
So before we did external analysis, right, looking on the outside, Kessel, political, all these other factors, now we're looking on the inside, right? As a company, what can you do well? How do you improve? How do you strategize? How do you observe uh, opportunities and threats? And how do you uh, remain competitive to get a high return rate? Right? So in today's global economy, some of the resources that were traditionally critical to firms' efforts to produce and distribute their goods and services are now likely to be a source of competitive advantage. What are some ways that companies are losing their competitive advantage? Like what is happening now that don't allow people to have a long-term competitive advantage? Like they use competitive advantage. What's changing? What's shifting? Technology. Yes, right? So basically you can imitate very quickly. With the internet around, you can see what a company is doing very, very quickly and imitate that and replicate it. So it means that a company that's doing something, that's got a good market, the companies come behind it. We just talked about with the airlines, they're all going to do the exact same thing once they see that it works, right? From American, United, what have you. They're going to come ahead and do the same thing. So therefore, you American United say, oh, okay, now they've caught up, they've imitated, replicated what we've done, they have created something. Global mindset, right? So to have a global mindset is the ability to analyze and manage, understand internal organizational ways that are not dependent on assumptions of a single country, culture, or context. That's the same could go maybe for Alaska Airlines. Like, are you just the, initially they focus on Alaska and Pacific, Pacific Northwest? Right now they're starting to expand the global mindset and like, okay, we need to look beyond just the borders of America, we need to expand, how do we do that? Well, one thing, you don't want Alaska Airlines take you to Bolivia, it makes no sense. Because image and brand, what people conceptualize, like why is Alaska Airlines taking me to Egypt? Right? So what they'll do is buy out other airlines that have been traveling these places around the world so they can, uh, so to utilize their core competencies, but we'll apply it to the new organizations that they have, right? They have expanded. They expanded using other elements, not necessarily their own. Um, analyzing the firm's internal organization requires that evaluators understand how to leverage the firm's unique bundle of resources. Right? I was going to ask you, this guy's going to run out of time, but what is your core competency? Gonna be graduating, get out of here soon. Graduating in May. So the thing is, looking at businesses are also most looking at self. What is your core competency? Do you have one that you uh, are aware of, or do you have multiple? Anybody has a core competency they are confident to say? Yeah. I'd say organized. We're organized, right? And that can take you a long way. So the fact that you acknowledge that, you can say, well, I'm not great at all these other things. And I know you want to start a business. But you say, well, how do I utilize my organization skills as a factor to make you know, my wrestling business extremely successful? Yeah. Which means it's not going to just involve you. You're organized by being having to organize very awesome people that you know, Right, so organization back, hey, I'm good at organizing people. And I may be able to organize some others. Who else? Who's evaluated and assessed their skills? To say, hey, I'm actually got a good core competency of X, Y, Z. I'm pretty sure. But the thing is, you guys are all unique and you do have some sort of core competency. If you don't realize it, leverage it, then you're going to be looking at some other skills you do not have, that you're not good at, right? So just a sense of being reality, same with supply here, you can't make up skills, right? Eventually they get exposed. So the thing is like, hey, I have this thing, I'm really good at this one particular thing. How do I translate this and be effective once I graduate from course? Instead of making up skills I know I'm not good at, you waste your time. Right, so the same applies here, right? 
Know what you do good. Don't pretend like you do a billion other things good. All right, so for, we got what, two minutes left? Oh. All right, but it's going here, right? So four competencies, we got four criteria of sustainable advantages. Value, rare, costly to imitate, non-substitute. What are some companies that have these four things? Valuable, they're rare, they're very costly to imitate, non substitute.